they have dust on them because oh they've just, gosh. they've been hanging in my closet for six years. <laughs> After a lifetime of babysitting and loving kids, Ashley Matulis was finally ready to have a baby of her own. Or two. <laughs> Whatever, whatever God wants to give us. Months earlier, she'd met Mark, the man of her dreams. We met online in January 2010. Met in person April 2010. They clicked immediately. Started dating, um, moved in together really quickly. We and wanted a lot of the same things. Three kids or four kids. Or they got married. When we first started trying. But no baby, even a year later. You know, started really worrying about, okay, well, how long is this really going to take? And here we are six years later and it still hasn't happened. So six years you've been trying? Six to years. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I was diagnosed at 13 with PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, essentially, in a very small nutshell, my ovaries um, are covered in cysts. Um, so that in turn makes my hormones all out of whack. Polycystic ovary syndrome is the leading cause of infertility in women. Basically everything is sitting in there and it just doesn't work. It's estimated 10% of women have PCOS. Many don't even know it. Common symptoms are weight gain, acne, thick body hair, and missed periods. In the past probably seven or eight years, I've had a period on my own three times maybe. Ashley's doctor put her on medications to induce and regulate her cycle. Birth control pills, Clomid, Provera, even an insulin drug, metformin. Nothing was happening. In the meantime, Ashley and Mark became foster parents. You know, kind of thought, well, if, we're, if we can't have our own, we can at least help other kids. Not knowing how hard it would be to be going through infertility and have these kids. That just made their desire to have their own even stronger. So Ashley tried the next step, injections of HCG, the hormone that releases the eggs. And that one failed. Well, they waited two months and tried again. This time, they got an amazing four follicles. Now that's the sac that releases the egg to be fertilized. I mean, everything was down to a T and it didn't work. So that was, that was probably the lowest I had ever been. Um, Cause you have four. <laughs> you're, you're four. four. And it didn't work. So that's when you really start questioning. <laughs> what, what is really wrong? You know, are they missing something? So could it be Mark? They had him tested. Nothing with him. He checked out. He's fine. Perfectly fine in all aspects. Um, so it is just me. So that's when you, that's when we, I was done. Because it's just, mm. It's so bad. And there's nothing you can do. Now bear in mind, none of this is cheap. More than $6,000. Mark and Ashley are a blue collar working couple and they didn't have infertility coverage. They looked into adoption, but Ashley says the expense and restrictions nixed that. You want it so bad and there's nothing you can do to get it, you know? Then on a fluke, Ashley made a call to Boston IVF, the infertility treatment center at the women's hospital. I said, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know why I'm calling you. I have no way to do any of these treatments. I literally just had to call you. It was during that 30 minute phone call, Ashley learned Mark's company does have infertility coverage. Within 30 seconds, oh yeah, you have 100% coverage. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that, was a, that was an emotional day. Because that, that changed everything. And now, Ashley and Mark are setting out on a new journey to conceive a baby of their own through in vitro fertilization. This may or may not work, you know. It, if it does, great. If it doesn't, then it just wasn't in the cards. But this is the last attempt, and I have to do it. And you are invited along for the journey. In the coming weeks, every Thursday on Eyewitness News at 10, we will take you step by step through the IVF process in hopes of bringing Ashley and Mark to their dream of having a baby of their own. And you can follow Ashley's blog on our Eyewitness News website, tristatehomepage.com. Go to sections and click on Hoping for a Miracle. We'll post more extra material about IVF and Ashley's experience as our series progresses. I hope you'll follow along. Shelley Kirk, Eyewitness News.
shampoo and conditioner. Um, that is organic. Uh, my body wash, that is organic. Um, so did you change everything? Yeah, yeah. From shampoo to food. All of it's organic. Um, none of it has anything bad for you in it. It's Out with the bad, in with the good. Fish oil, so I take two of those a day. Um, prenatal, I take one of those a day. Four till B12. About 20 pills a day. None of it is cheap. So we're probably looking at maybe at least $200 a month here. Just right there. Yeah. Ordinarily. But it's worth it when you're on your last chance to have a baby. This is Dr. Griffin right in here. Hi. Oh. Ashley and Mark Matulis ease into their seats at infertility specialist Dr. Daniel Griffin's office, nervous but clinging to hope. Because you've been trying to get pregnant. Six years. And good things have not happened. Dr. Griffin knows that anxiety. It's the first thing when I see patients that I try to convey to them is that they're not alone. And this is very common. And just because things haven't happened for whatever reason, it doesn't mean that things can happen. After so, dozens of questions, no, many of which are highly issues, personal. Other symptoms that you may have noticed, like have you had any problems with unwanted hair growth? Dr. Griffin opens up a whole new possibility. IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. The egg is fertilized outside of the body in the laboratory. After a certain number of days, the embryo is then transferred back. Would IVF be a good choice for us, do you think? I think it just depends on how aggressive you want to be. In terms of giving you the best chance of pregnancy, then IVF would be a better option. So the journey begins with weeks of preparation and waiting for Ashley's body to be ready for the IVF process. Starting with an SIS ultrasound, checking Ashley's uterus for any problems. Perfect. It's all clear. Okay. Up next, a daily drug, Provera, to induce a menstrual cycle. Then a barrage of testing, blood draws, including 10 vials at one time, checking for genetic disease risk. Now begin injections, painful, bruising, emotional injections. It's tough not only on, you know, your body and your emotions and everything else, but on a marriage. I mean, there's, there's times where I'm sure Mark doesn't want to be around me. The goal? To stimulate Ashley's ovaries to do what they would never do on their own, allowing more eggs to reach maturity. Starting at two injections a day, leading up to four a day over a 12-day period. <laughs> Ironically, it's another needle. Is that on my face? That, you're here. that brings relief. And we do a couple points on the wrist, just helping proper blood flow get restored to the areas like the uterus and the ovaries. Dr. Corey Jones treats between two and six fertility patients a day. He says by stimulating a certain remote part of the body, the stomach. you can help regulate hormones. There's still a lot of mystery around acupuncture, but um, one of the main philosophies is that we're really treating the body from the inside out or letting the body's own healing system activate. He says in the past year, about 35 of his patients have had successful pregnancies. The medicine can only do so much. God takes over from, you know, from there. And so, I mean, you have, you have to try everything when it's your one and only shot. Next Thursday on Eyewitness News at 10, you'll see the IVF procedure begin. We'll take you through it step by step. And we are there when problems arise for Mark and Ashley as they are hoping for a miracle. You can see part one, Ashley's blog, and more material on our Eyewitness News website, tristatehomepage.com. Go to sections and click on Hoping for a Miracle. Shelley Kirk, Eyewitness News. Six years of trying to get pregnant comes down to this early morning procedure. Two days after a trigger shot, that's an injection to start the ovulation process, it's time to go in and get Ashley's eggs. Here's what we're going to do after we retrieve the eggs today. So we're going to fertilize the eggs. The plan will be to do a day five transfer, which will be next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to put two embryos back. And then if we have more than two embryos that look good, 
we will freeze the embryos. Yeah. Once Ashley signs off, they just sign there. She's off to the OR, where the anesthesiologist gently sends her to sleep. Tomorrow, you sleeping? No. And the work begins. Guided by an ultrasound, Dr. Daniel Griffin locates the follicles in Ashley's ovaries. Now those are the dark circles you see here. You can see the needle penetrate the follicle. Dr. Griffin uses that needle to suck out the fluid. Inside that fluid are the eggs, hopefully strong, healthy, and prolific eggs. Does the egg that you have found, does it look mature? Now that's been a major problem with Ashley's fertility. For weeks, she's been taking injections to help her eggs mature. Once removed, the fluid is deposited in test tubes. An embryologist inspects them, looking for the best eggs, counting them off. The black spot, the circle black spot is the actual egg. The rest of those cells around it are like the supporting cells. That process continues about a dozen times over. It's clear, though, that something is not exactly perfect. Are we seeing cells, Tracy? The embryologist confirms. Dr. Griffin continues, determined to find the best possible eggs for this last shot for Mark Nashley. Sit over in that corner and looked around and you couldn't really read any. In the end, 11 eggs are retrieved, washed, and placed in Petri dishes. Ashley asleep through it all. When she awakes, Dr. Griffin shares the news. We got 11 eggs, which is not as many as I was expecting to get. Dang um, it. I was hoping to get between like 15 to 20 based upon kind of what your ultrasound looked like. We still have plenty of players in the game, right? So we'll All call right. you tomorrow. Tomorrow is the most important number, which is how many, you know, fertilized normals. Later that day, in the romantic setting of a Petri dish, Ashley's 11 eggs are introduced to Mark's sperm in hopes they'll hit it off overnight and nature will take its course. Now the next morning is met with high hopes, but those hopes are dashed. When the embryologist looks in the Petri dish. Unfortunately, none of the eggs fertilize normally using that technique. Eggs and sperm, but none together. Not a single one. It didn't work. Tremendously disappointed. Dr. Griffin says this happens only about 1% of the time, and it's not known why. He then had to call Ashley with the news. So when he said that none had fertilized, that was, at that point we were done. If he couldn't get my eggs to fertilize at all, then we were done, you know, IVF was done. So that one had failed. Disappointment, anger, why, sadness. But Dr. Griffin was not ready to give up. There is a way still to give things a chance. I'm talking about rescue ICSI. Next week, rescue ICSI what it is and the insufferable waiting involved, and the biggest question of all, did it work? You can read more of Ashley's experience in her blog at Eyewitness News website, tristatehomepage.com. Just go to sections and click on Hoping for a Miracle. Shelley Kirk, Eyewitness News. When you hear the word rescue ICSI and you know that your eggs have been out of you for 24 hours and you know that Mark's sperm's been out, you know, like everything's been sitting there for 24 hours and, you know, the clock is ticking. And Rescue ICSI is an attempt to save the fertilization process after Ashley's egg and Mark's sperm failed to come together in the Petri dish on their own. We don't normally do it the day after yeah. the retrieval, but in cases like this, I mean, we would do it the day after the retrieval if we were able to. An embryologist helps the sperm find his way by actually injecting the sperm into the egg. It's not done as a rescue very often, and it is considered a long shot. You pray that it's going to work, but you don't know. The news comes the next day. Of the 11 eggs retrieved, only four were fertilized and still alive. We had four embryos, so we're back in the game. Everything is fine, you know. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Except one thing because the timing is then off. It is critical that Ashley's uterus accept the embryos. Now that means the transfer has to be done at just the right time. The rescue ICSI threw that timeline out of whack. The best thing to do in that circumstance is to not do a transfer at all and freeze the embryo 
wait for the patient to start a menstrual cycle and then transfer the embryo in a subsequent menstrual cycle. That means waiting. Hello. Four weeks with the embryos in the deep freeze. The freeze and thaw means more risk. Oh, I was mad. I was so mad because, I mean, you get so low knowing that you don't have any embryos. For him to call you the day before your transfer and say, hey, we're not going to do it. It's like, <laughs> all right, I've waited six years, so now I have to wait a whole nother month. You know, like, why? Why? One long month later, timing is back on track. How are you doing? I'm OK. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was about a month ago that we were here. I know. <laughs> Ashley and Mark arrive for the next big step. So I have good news. Okay, we thawed two embryos. Two embryos. They both good. survived the thaw. Transferring the two surviving embryos into Ashley. You can't see the embryos when we put them in, but you can see the sort of air bubble. Using a catheter, Dr. Griffin implants the embryos into the uterus. I promise they won't fall out. A five-minute procedure, rather anticlimactic. It was very quick, and now I'm up, and <laughs> just, like you said, just not very dramatic for everything that has gone into the past three months. Those are our <laughs> embryos <laughs> that they just transferred. And now yet another wait, nine days to know if all this worked, God, if Ashley is pregnant. Did you know they're in there? We all saw them go in there. What are they doing in there? You know, are they doing what they're supposed to do? April 21st, 3 p.m., Ashley, best buddy Joe Bird, and myself fill in for Mark, unable to get off work. We await the call. All of us, a bundle of nerves, all of us hoping for a miracle. So we got the results from your blood work back, and they are positive. <laughs> What number is that? 204. Oh. <laughs> oh. I can't believe how calm you are. <laughs> Something you thought you'd never hear, isn't it? The infertility journey is over, but motherhood and parenthood has just started. We are all so happy for Ashley and Mark. You can see our entire Hoping for a Miracle series, more interviews with Dr. Griffin, as well as Ashley's blog by going to our Eyewitness News website, tristatehomepage.com. Go to sections and click on Hoping for a Miracle. We're going to keep you updated on Ashley's progress as we welcome baby or babies, Matulis, right about Christmas time. Shelley Kirk, Eyewitness News.